Well, while op-ed pages of major newspapers have been flooded with opinion essays about why Joe Biden should not run for re-election today, the Houston Chronicle endorsed Joe Biden. Under the leadership of the oldest and arguably the most experienced president in American history, the team in the White House for the past three years has performed remarkably well, despite the rancor and divisiveness that have afflicted this nation for nearly a decade. The accomplishments of an administration dedicated to governing, one that believes in the power of government to make life better for the American people, is a key reason we heartily endorse the re-election of President Joe Biden. The other reason, equally important, is to fend off the chaos, corruption, and danger to the nation that would accompany the return of Donald Trump to the White House. The Houston Chronicle editorial offered a sampling of President Biden's accomplishments. Quote, one of the clear advantages of a president as experienced as Biden is wisdom. In this case, the wisdom to get the heck out of the Fed's way as it masterfully applied the brakes to what could have been runaway inflation the economy has recovered from the perils of the pandemic and is now healthier than that of any other advanced nation, with unemployment approaching a 50-year low. Inflation is trending downwards somehow, despite all the dire prophecies of economists without the bitter medicine of a recession or a period of high unemployment. Gas prices have fallen as the U.S. produces more oil than any country in history, including Saudi Arabia. The administration is investing $7 billion in an ambitious solar power project and is promoting other alternative energy products. The Biden administration in its first year managed to pass a bipartisan infrastructure investment and jobs act that's expected to add an estimated 1.5 million jobs per year for the next 10 years. The Houston Chronicle pointed out that the Biden infrastructure bill targets projects in employment distressed counties around the country. One of the distressed areas to benefit is Wilbarger County, Texas. It's worth noting that Wilbarger County in 2020 cast 21 percent of its votes for Biden, nearly 78 percent for Trump. It is impossible to imagine Donald Trump doing anything to benefit any area of the country that did not vote for him. The Houston Chronicle's endorsement of Joe Biden also lists these Biden accomplishments. The Affordable Care Act during this administration has made coverage more affordable and more accessible for millions of Americans. The Biden White House also has given Medicare the power to directly negotiate with Big Pharma, thereby lowering drug prices. After decades of thoughts and prayers and little else in response to mass killings, the Biden White House managed to shepherd a bipartisan Safer Communities Act through a balky Congress. And the Houston Chronicle's endorsement of President Biden's re-election ends this way. We are all well aware of Biden's age, 81, and Trump's, 77, as well as memory lapses that have prompted near panic among many of the president's fellow Democrats. Those of us who remember the energetic, garrulous, occasionally even eloquent Joe Biden of years past can see the difference a few years have made, even if he was always prone to gaffes. Accounts other than the report of special counsel Robert Herr suggest, however, that Biden remains focused, engaged, and in command on the vital issues that occupy a president. Experience counts. Like Ronald Reagan, Lyndon Johnson, and Franklin Roosevelt, Biden's deft management of his team has made him arguably the most productive president since LBJ in the early months of his administration. He has, as they say, forgotten more than his presumed Republican rival will ever know. That's not saying much, and at the same time, it says it all. Did you see the picture of me, the horrible picture with the stomach out to here? That was... <laughs> so what I do is I'm putting up today a picture of me actually, what I actually look like, hitting a ball, smashing the frickin' ball. <laughs> and you'll see quite... 
I wouldn't say slim. I wouldn't say slim, but not bad. But the ball does go far. I would say it goes about nine times further than Biden can hit it. Yeah, he's fine. He's just fine. And he's running for president. Meanwhile, in the campaign for the Republican presidential nomination, the front runner is campaigning on creating, presumably through a constitutional amendment, absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for presidents of the United States and former presidents of the United States. And his opponent in the Republican primary campaign is campaigning on pardoning the front runner. If you're talking about pardoning Trump, it's not a matter of innocence or guilt at that point, because that means he would have already been found guilty. I believe in the best interest of bringing the country together, I would pardon Donald Trump, because I think it's important for the country to move on. Nikki Haley is saying that she would allow Special Prosecutor Jack Smith's two criminal cases against Donald Trump to proceed to a verdict, and only then would she pardon Donald Trump. But there is nothing any president would be able to do to relieve Donald Trump of the burdens he might face if he's found guilty of election crimes in Georgia. And there's nothing any president would be able to do to help Donald Trump in the first criminal case ever filed against him, which will be the first criminal trial that Donald Trump faces, now scheduled to begin in Manhattan on Monday, March 25th. In that trial, Donald Trump is accused of business fraud to cover his hush money payments to porn star Stormy Daniels so that he could be elected president. And there is nothing any president can do, including Donald Trump, were he to become president again, to help Donald Trump deal with the now more than half a billion dollars Donald Trump owes in civil judgments against him after losing four civil trials in a row in Manhattan. Our first guest tonight, Andrew Weissman, wrote, if Trump posts a bond for the huge New York judgments via a third party, say the likes of a Musk or a foreign country person, that would be of enormous import to how he would behave as president. Bloomberg News reports on how Donald Trump's legal battles are costing his presidential campaign. Trump spent $51.2 million in 2023 on legal expenses and can tap another $23.5 million, most of it stashed in an allied super political action committee that he can use to pay his lawyers. But as his four criminal cases ramp up, those funds are expected to run out at a critical time around July when the Republican National Convention triggers the official start to the general election campaign. Trump's legal bills have been a drag on what has otherwise been a strong fundraising operation. His campaign and allied groups last year collectively spent $13.6 million dollars more than they raised, thanks to a large nest egg of donations to save America from 2021 and 2022 before he was actively campaigning. That fundraising buffer has nearly been depleted.